Hello and welcome to a Nostalgic Writer pen review. We're going to be quick today, don't really want to take up a ton of your time, or my time if you hear all the family stuff in the background. So what am I reviewing for you today? Why none other than the Twisby Diamond Mini. Let's go ahead and uh, redo our focus here. There we go. Yep, the Diamond Mini retailing for somewhere between $55 and $60, probably more like $60. Um, this is a pen manufactured in Taiwan, I want to say. Um, I'm probably wrong, someone will correct me. And actually, really rather nice. So first things first, I did keep the box so that you guys could uh, take a peek at it. It's very uh, Apple-esque, is it not? It's just a bit of plastic. And then the pen, there are some normally some clear plastic bits to have, but of course I have... Uh, taken this guy out a few times, not a few times, I've been using it a lot, you can see the water because I just cleaned it recently, um, been using it a lot and I just want to make sure I give you good reviews is all. So yes, Diamond Mini, this is a piston filler, you can see there, down, up, pretty simple, I do notice when it is down there's a little bit of a play right here, loose, a little loosey-goosey, so just a heads up. Alrighty, so what else comes in the box? Well, uh, for the most part it's just this plastic bit. If we pull it over, we've got some silicone grease and a little wrench that I've never bothered actually taking out. Yep, little wrench so that you can uh, take the pen apart, which I have not needed to do and wouldn't do, really. Go on Reddit, see how many times people have opened them up and then not been able to get them back together. So here are, it also does come with instructions for how to do just about everything you need, or, you know, do, 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 do. Real nice. I like that. Look at that, Twisby Diamond 530. There you go. So going into some of the specifications about it, it weighs in, empty of course, at 0.67 ounces or 18 grams. Uh, it's got a capped length of approximately four and three quarters inches or 12 centimeters. Uh, an approximate non-posted length of four and a half inches or 11 centimeters and again I'm rounding on either or just to make them easier to understand numbers and a posted length of approximately five and three quarters inches or 14.1 centimeters so being the mini this is a smaller pen um, the only one I really have that I felt was comparable in size was the Kawiko Sport so as you can see, it is definitely a little bigger, and it is bigger in every dimension. It's a little bit longer, it's a little bit thicker. The nib's bigger, I believe this is a number six, whereas the Kaweco has a number five. Let's bring that a little closer to the camera. We'll, again, adjust the focus so you can see. Yep. So, overall impressions of the pen, I rather like it. It's actually got a really sort of looking for high quality feel and a darn well better being uh, 50 60 dollars. That's not a lot of money if we're looking you know kind of overall in the fountain pen world but it's a lot of money to me. So it's got a really nice high quality feel. It is definitely a little heavy for its size. Half an ounce for this that's in the hand it feels pretty substantial. A lot of that I'm thinking is cap weight though it is n noticeably heavier in the hand. Um, I would pretty much only recommend writing with this pen posted. It balances super, super well this way and fits the hand a lot better too. So if we undo that, so, you know, I've mentioned before, my hands are not the biggest. So that's good. Gives you a pretty good idea. Um, yeah, no real complaints. So let's ink this bad boy up real quick and go from there. We're going to be hitting that with this guy. 
Which, incidentally, might be a little gunky. Hmm. Nope, we're good. <laughs> Had some dried ink on the rim. It's all good. Alrighty. Yep, we just go ahead and put it in there, twist it the correct direction, preferably not the wrong direction. I'm only going to give it a half fill for the video today because honestly, there's not much more exciting to me than when you're able to actually see the ink sloshing around and you don't really get to do that if it's completely full. It's half the appeal of the demonstrator, right? Alright, so we're going to just give that a quick wipe. Make sure everything's good to go. Ah, uh, yeah, that's... There we go. Alrighty, so this particular model has the fine nib on it. This comes in the standard assortment. Extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a couple of stubs. Um, what do we want to go ahead and write here? Eh, we'll go cliche. Mimic SBRE Brown for a minute. Jumps, not jumped. Sorry, I'm trying to realign our focus here. There we go. So let's go ahead and write that again, just because you didn't really get to see that. Alrighty, so as far as comments on the nib, super smooth, super pleasant writing experience. I really, really like it. There's just the tiniest bit of feedback on um, pretty much any paper I have tried. Let's see here. So this is just Georgia Print um, 20 pound that I'm grabbed right here. You know, so the cheapest copy paper I could find. Right, so obviously it's going to spread out that ink a little bit more. That just is, you know, that's the name of the game. Um, jumping back over to our samples, this was on HP 32 pound laser jet. You can definitely see the line, the difference in line size. Um, I'll try being really quiet and we'll see if you can hear a difference in noise too. Right, so that's just paper differences. What you gonna do with that? Um, actually, my wife is right here. Would you mind grabbing me that red notebook off of the bar up by the kitchen? Thank you. Right after I saved you from a kitten jumping in your face? Yes. It's gonna be one of those videos, folks. <laughs> so while she's doing that, I'll go ahead and just do some quick lines for you, give you kind of an idea of what it takes. Yeah, so if we compare that to, say, the uh, Lamy Medium, let's go ahead and do that. Boop. I didn't see that red one, but there's these two. Thank you. I'll take it. Alrighty, so do a little bit of Claire Fontaine as well. Probably not a ton. You get to see my brewing book this way. I can go ahead and uh, write over some of this. So this gray sample was actually written with the same pen, so it'll be a good, right? And then really quiet, hoping that you'll be able to hear it. Right, and of course, Claire Fontaine, really, really nice far as paper goes. So, 
yeah, overall, as far as performance and everything is concerned, super, super happy with this pen. It was a great purchase um, on behalf of, on the part of my wife, not myself. I wouldn't have spent that much money on myself. So, yeah. If I had to give it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably go for like an 8 or 9, honestly. And that's just because I don't like giving 10s to things. So, I do really like the nib. I kind of feel like it could be just a hair smoother. Um, but of course, it is a fine, not a medium or a broad or anything like that. So you may have a different experience if you get the bigger ones. Um, it does hold a ridiculously good amount of ink for being such a small pen. I'm super happy with that. Um, good weight, good heft, good feel, good nib. Worth the money? Yeah, I'd say so. So that's been today's review. Feel free to leave me some comments. Let me know what you liked, didn't like about it. And uh, we'll see you next time.